In this video, you're going to learn that how you can make a request to a third-party API and display all the results. The API that we'll be using for our example is JSON placeholder. JSON placeholder is just a dummy website where you can go and you can check out different APIs that they have. I'm using the one for the photos because it does return you a thumbnail URL, which we can also display it on our screen, like some sort of an image. All of this information, as you can see, it's all fake information or dummy information. So here's our app. We have a app component and we have a render component. And the render currently simply says, well, hello world. Now, if we want to display the photos or the list of photos, as you can see, it is basically returning it from an API. We can do it in many different ways. So first of all, we're going to look at how we can perform that request from within the app component. And then later on, you're going to see that how we can create a separate component to display the photos. For this, I'm going to go ahead and implement component did mount. So the reason that we are implementing component did mount is that inside component did mount, we are going to perform a request, a fetch request that is going to download all the data. Now you don't really want to do this in render because once we get the data, we want to hold the data and we are going to hold the data in state. And as we have learned previously, Whenever you assign something to the state, the render gets fired again. So if you are assigning the state over here, if you are updating the state by saying this dot state, this dot set state, this is not a good idea to do because you are updating the state within the render, which in turn is going to call the render again, which is going to set the state and going to call the render again and then this cycle will never really end. So don't do that. You can also call the fetch request inside the constructor, but component did mount is more of a later event that happens where the component is successfully mounted on the virtual DOM. So we're just going to do it right over here. Now you can use any networking library that you want. You can use XCS, you can use XML HTTP, which is plain vanilla JavaScript. I'm just gonna use a fetch request, which is a fetch library, and going to pass in the URL. Now this is going to return me the promise. So I'm just gonna get dot then, we'll get the response. But this is not the JSON response we are trying to get. This is just the response object. So in order to get the actual JSON, we have to call response.json, which is going to return another promise. We can capture that promise and we can get some sort of a result. Obviously these variables that I'm using over here, the result and the response, these are completely up to you. And let's go ahead and simply print out the result that we are getting. Now, if you go back, you can see on the console, we have 5,000 elements being returned and each element represents a certain item, certain object, which is part of this URL or the result. You can see that it's an array which is indicated by this block bracket. And if we try to zoom in a little bit more over here, I'm not sure why it's not zooming, here we go. You can see that these are different objects. So this is one object, this is second object, this is third object and so on. Okay. So once we have the result and you can call it posts, you can call it images, you can call it anything you want. Once we have the result, we want to, oops, now it's zooming. So we want to assign it to somewhere so that we can get a hold of this meaning we, have, we want to put all of these results somewhere. And that somewhere can be the state. So let's go ahead and declare the state first. I'm gonna say this, 
dot state equals to an empty object. And inside this empty object, I can say photos, which is an array. Because if you look over here, we are actually returning an array. So let's go back. Over here, instead of console.log, since I have to write multiple lines, I'm going to use a round bracket, uh, the curly bracket. And now I can set the state. So this dot set state, and we can set a new object for the state where photos is equals to the result. So basically result will contain the response, the JSON response that we are getting from the server, and we are simply assigning it to photos. Okay, now what happens when we actually assign the state, when we set the new state? What function is called when we automatically when we set the state? It's the render function. And this is our opportunity to go and update the user interface and display all the different photos and all the title of the photos and all the stuff. That's going to be exactly the same as we have done in the users example when we were using a hard-coded list of users. So I'm going to go ahead and create a photo items instance. This dot state dot photos dot map, I will get each photo item. And over here now I have to return some sort of an object. So I'm going to return and I'm going to return an li. Now I can do anything I want over here. So let's go ahead and look at the actual result that we're getting. Let's first try to get these titles printed out. Once we get the titles, we can work on the thumbnail URL. So let's go back. If I want to display a title, I'm just going to display it anywhere I want, and I can simply say photo.title, where photo is just a instance or the variable name that we are giving to every single item we are iterating. They are represented by photo, just a map function in the end. Let's see if we can format this a little bit nicer. Okay. Once we have the photo items, we can inject it and show it on the interface. Now, since I'm returning a list of LIs, it would be much better if I actually change this to UL and inject the value right here because LI usually goes inside the UL, right? So I'm going to say photo items. Let's go ahead and save it. And there we go. These are all 5,000 titles that are displayed on the screen. Once again, we are getting a warning over here that each of these items should be unique, specified by a key. This time, we can actually use the ID that is already part of the each object, which is unique. So I can go back and I can put it ID right here as a key. And I can say photo dot, the property name is ID. And there we go, no more warning. The other thing that we want to do is we want to display the images, the thumbnail URL. So this means that we have to use this property called thumbnail URL, which is on every single element. So let me copy that. Now, how would you display an image if you were just using HTML? image tag, right? So you're going to use the same thing. But this time, the source will be a little bit different. Because source is coming from the loop itself, the photo object. And I can say photo dot thumbnail URL. And that's it. Let's go back. And we'll see if it refreshes. There we go. These are all the images. Now, these are 5,000 images that you're loading. So there is a possibility that it will, you know, it will be very, very, very slow. As you can see, it's very, very slow. But it is displaying 5,000 of these images. And these are all like dummy images. All right. 
Now, obviously, if you are doing this in production, it's not recommended that you load 5,000 images. So maybe you want to slice up the photos array and all that, but eventually you will see all these images getting displayed. This is great. A couple of different things we can do over here to improve the code. First of all, inside the component did mount, we are calling all of this stuff, the, basically the fetch request, which is fine. It, I mean, it works perfectly fine, but maybe we can create a separate function for it. So I'm just gonna go over here and I'm going to create a function called, let's say, fetch photos. And we're going to use the arrow functions. Inside over here, I can go ahead and cut this. And I can do something like this. Now, if someone has to fetch the photos, they will simply say this.fetch photos and it should be able to work as expected. So basically it's gonna fetch the photos again. There we go, and it works perfectly fine. By creating a function fetch photos, we have created or making or made it a little bit more reusable. So maybe down the road, you have to click a button to fetch the photos, maybe a refresh button. You can all, then you can, all, then you can call the fetch photos function and it will do that for you, all right? Now this is great and in the next lecture, I want to show you that how you can create a sub or nested control or a component that will be responsible for just displaying these photos. So we're gonna check it out in the next lecture.